Welcome to a podcast of total terror. Night of the Nerdy Laser. A podcast which celebrates films of horror. Night of the Nerdy Laser. A night with a podcast that won't stay dead. A podcast of total horror. Night of the Nerdy Laser. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Night of the Nerdy Laser Podcast, episode 74, 47, 74. I am Matt Henry. I am Richard. They call me Panic because I don't. You'll. <laughs> And I'm infested Jeff Lown. And tonight we're going to be watching, this was supposed to be like movies we're thankful for or our picks, right? And yeah. I originally picked Dead and Breakfast, but here's the thing, y'all. Only I own Dead and Breakfast in the no. United States. Only <laughs> no, Jeff me owns and it. Jeff. Me yeah, and, me and me you. And Jeff. Yeah. Jeff owns it, I don't. Uh, and I'm sorry. I couldn't find it to stream at all. Like, not even to rent. We're not even. This is why physical media is important, people. This is why I wish there was a rental store up the road so I could have just went and got it. And this is why schooling is important. Let me correct this. Jeff and I. <laughs> <laughs> I have an English um, degree. I wasn't going to say nothing. Good, good, good. You should, though. Oh, you should. I have an so English So I don't degree. sound like I literally crawled out of the. Out of the gutter. Um, okay. All you have to do is say you're from Sevierville. And it, Shut up. You're, you're <laughs> I'm dealing with this right now actively. And there's people around me that I'm close with. And they're like, you know, you should work on how you speak. I'm like, is it that bad? <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> okay. Anyway, so. Gosh watching, darn, why? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm doing is sitting here brushing my hair. Um, <laughs> um, okay. So what we ended up going with was actually a movie. I'm I'm thankful that I had never seen it. That's why I picked it. Oh, you um, I'm thankful because um, uh, I think I picked a gym. Uh, we're, we watched the 1993's Ticks. So where was this Amblin branch off of reality of a movie? Because this was, was this great? Was this amazing? Was it 10 times better than it had any right to be? I know how I feel, and I know exactly how oh, I know how I feel. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, them them hillbillies, man. I can't. They ruin the entire movie for me. It's yeah. they make it's no single. sense. Say hillbilly. <clears throat> the other guys are business well, man. Whatever. Hopefully. I businessman He's hillbilly. Half breed. <laughs> A businessman hillbilly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the hillbilly is his henchman. Yes. <laughs> I, I mean, and that was just straight out of like Pulp Fiction at the time and, you know, a play on deliverance and whatever. And it's not good. I don't <clears> like <throat> it. It's boring. I hate the end where they, where the, where they trap them and it becomes a Quentin Tarant a bad Quentin Tarantino movie. I just, uh, I, I mean, I've met the some people like great. that guy before. <laughs> so, well, but that doesn't mean I want to watch a movie about him. I mean, I'm not okay. saying he doesn't exist. I'm just saying that, like, you know, what I wanted was like a um, a movie about uh, ticks? arachnophobia. Oh, uh, okay, yeah, but with kids and ticks and like mutated ticks. But arachnophobia is a great movie. I mean, perfection, really. And in this, you just have some characters that don't work. I'm not saying it's a completely bad movie, because there are lots of scenes that I like. But I just, uh, I know why it doesn't really get talked about. Well, it, okay, so the positives right off the bat is that the special effects are yeah, really solid. Nice, right? Yeah, um, Even the front screen projection with the fire at the end and how all that looked. Uh, actually turned out beautiful on the Vinegar Syndrome 4K release that I watched. Um, I mean, it looked absolutely gorgeous, and I watched it on my big four-screen TV, and it was just, uh, I was kind of in awe of this 1993 cheesy horror film and how good the effects were and how it felt, the soundtrack felt like an Amblin movie, right? The score. 
sounded like an Amblin movie, kind of. And then at the end, we even get a big homage to The Fly, which we'll get there here in a little bit. But um, I really, I actually, I thoroughly enjoyed this. Um, I mean, I got lost a little bit, and I kind of was confused on what the redneck and the rich guy was even doing there. I, I mean, they were just there to fill time. I mean, because they didn't have a story that that stretched it out to a note. I mean, that's really their only purpose. Like, what they should have done is had, like, a 10-minute beginning scene introducing all the kids. And this is basically Ernest Goes to Camp, right? Like, it's it's a bunch of juvenile delinquents yeah. that get sent <laughs> out to the wilderness. <laughs> and one of them but, is Seth Green, we have to mention. This is... One oh, of the, them, cast the cast is, is great. Like yeah, 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 yeah. Um, we have the not-so-fresh prince. Um, the, <laughs> the guy, Yeah, Alfonso, who plays Carlton in The Fresh Prince. But he's playing like a... Like a a badass character, and I don't buy it at all. Not even a little bit. It's um, so it's hard to buy I don't even that. buy it. I don't know. I I think it was fine. I think it was fine. I, that didn't bug me as much because I I do think I I didn't think of him as Carlton the whole time. I don't know why, but I just didn't. I did initially, but you once you get watching it for a while, he becomes a little bit more like believable in his character. Once his dog dies, sure. Yeah. Um. So I know. Uh, so, okay, so we have those two characters. So, first of all, this is maybe one year after It, and Seth Green looks like he's five years older, just out of, because out of, this was released in 93, so I'm assuming it was filmed in 92, and I think It was filmed in 90. Um, but apparently, the opening of this movie, Seth Green is a, basically his dad drops him off underneath a bridge, <laughs> and it's like, they'll be here to pick you up soon. And then he starts having flashbacks of whenever he was left in the woods by himself. What a pussy. No, I'm just like, <laughs> well, it it, I was just like, what the hell is all that? Like, th there was so much random backstory that didn't really matter. Yeah, they, I, I kind of <laughs> mentioned it to you when I was texting you with the, the hillbilly guys, how it kind of felt like two stories, like neither of them yeah. were really complete. And they're like, you know what? If we just merge these two together, I think we could cut a movie. So, cause I mean, we want to see the real movie <laughs> of the hillbilly right now. We, Cause we have like, you know, the youth, the youth like group guy who's kind of trying to, you know, instill these values and stuff and kind of correct these actions of what's these it, kids. But then you have last like, name? Peter, uh, Peter, I can't scus Scalari not well or, no no he he was uh he was the bosom buddy he was Tom's bosom buddy <laughs> oh and okay. then and then he was in newhart so i know him from newhart he was the yuppie couple uh in newhart but, yeah um, anyway he's great actually in this movie eh, i mean they're making him play like this badass kind of and, he, and he's just not so yeah no. go ahead no, I was going to say, and the, the, the real stars of the movie is these ticks. And then, so w when in a movie where there's like a giant insect that morphs into something, you're usually going to think it's toxic waste. But twist, it's Lance Armstrong. <laughs> <laughs> Some steroids. Yeah. It's Clint, it's Clint Howard. <laughs> that hairdo, man, is iconic. He's the best part of the movie for me. I loved him in this movie. I thought he was great. He's so creepy. <laughs> Just in everything. <laughs> so for you guys watching on YouTube, which we have a YouTube channel, Just Night of Nerdy Laser, the same as the podcast. Uh, I have the, the ticks on, um, from Vinegar Syndrome. So it, this, this movie is awesome, the release from Vin, Vincent, because you get the book slipcase. So it's got like, uh, bottom top <clears throat> side then you take it out it's got another slip case and then you take it out and the same artwork <laughs> from the front but what's really cool about this is um I yes <laughs> best line in the movie <laughs> yeah it's pretty yeah. great um no the best line in the movie is they called me panic because I never do <laughs> Um, Lord. 
<laughs> I'm gonna that's my new nickname. You guys have to start calling me Panic. I'm gonna call you Panic because you always do. Because I'm I always do. <laughs> call me stressed out because <laughs> I always am. <laughs> But I mean, so, okay, so we have what someone explained to me because maybe I missed something in this movie. Why is there be why is they're making steroids to put on the marijuana plants yep. to make them grow faster, correct? Yeah. And yeah. explain this to me is how is it that the veterinarian knows this just by smell? She just smiles. She has a quick little throwaway like, line where she's like, "They use it." That's steroids. That's steroids. <laughs> she has a quick throwaway line where she says, uh, "She explains what that is." So there's a little exposition dump, and then she's like, "But that's between you and me." Like, yes. Yeah. They so use she, it to make their pot plants grow, but that's between you and I. Like, why is it between us? Why do you know it? You're high as right now it's her she can do what she wants yeah <laughs> oh, um, yeah so i i do like the opening of this movie where you get although if you don't smoke pot or understand you know if you're not a herbal whatever whatever a pot grower's technical term is <laughs> uh if you're not a pot grower I, you don't really understand what's head? going on but, uh, <laughs> pot, heads, pot heads typically don't grow pot. They just smoke it. <laughs> I'm going to assume most people that grow it smoke it as well, right? Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. and... <laughs> I mean <laughs> before it became legal, I'd assume that was pretty standard, yeah. But now that it's legal in a lot of places, I bet the people that are in it just do it to make the money. That's true. But so... So we get a really cool thing of this uh, this greenhouse in the middle of the woods and uh, all these machines and stuff and the, the steroids dripping on the plants and dripping on the ground. And there's like sacks of these ticks all around. Uh, there's one on the ground, but then there's some up top. So it's kind of weird. So, mate, I, I don't know. I don't think I don't ticks know. grow in sacks either. I think that's like a... Well, they do in this movie. In this movie, they definitely do. But I think that was, it felt like a weird homage to Alien, didn't it? To me, sure, like, yeah. yeah. Uh, because we had all these. Ticks pus- also yeah. typically don't explode just by the touch of fire. But, <laughs> but I mean, yes. maybe mutated ticks do, but. Maybe ticks full of steroids may explode. I mean, it, by it is fair. Once you introduce like mutated ticks, you don't really have to go by law, you know? Well, um, to be fair, anyone on steroids is just one <laughs> smart-ass <laughs> comment away from exploding to begin with. <laughs> going full crisp and walk. And then just... Oh, oh man. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um... <laughs> But uh, but yeah, cool opening, and then we get the kids kind of all meeting, uh, <clears throat> and then them driving off in a van with two adults. Doesn't sound right. And one Asian girl who won't speak. She does eventually. And I think that's part of my problem is the kids. I just I hated most every kid. Like the Rome guy couldn't stand him. Wanted him to die. Um, his daughter was fine. She was fine. Seth Green was good. Um, I like Panic. I thought he was okay. And um, the ones I didn't like was like the rich girl. Like, why are they here? I don't. I don't. They should have been there to die, but that's <laughs> not what happened. I know, yeah, Everybody I know. basically yeah. gets away. They do. Yeah. yeah. I mean, except for except for Carlton. <laughs> he he had a pretty bad. What he got shot. He got he, burned. He got ticked. He got he was uh, stabbed at one point. Maybe <laughs> something crawled up in him and died. Just about <laughs> everything. I, he like cut his own leg open to get a tick out at one point. Uh, one of the most painful shots in the movie is Clint Howard pointing a gun point blank at his own leg and blowing holes into his own leg, which just for whatever reason. It rubbed me the wrong way. I just could not imagine <laughs> shooting myself in the leg. 
I guess if you're in enough pain and the, his death is, is really great. Like, I, I mean, his, I think he's really on point and Clint Howard in like little doses is just really, really good. Like, you know, I mean, I like ice cream man, <clears throat> but I like a role like this, although I do wish he was in it more, <laughs> but I mean, he can just grab a hold of this, uh, this role and just, uh, knock it out of the park. Um, and uh, I love that he's chasing the girl, and she's like, ah, ah, and he's like, I can't see you, I can't see you, because his face is all swelled. <laughs> and uh, and I mean, it's kind of a gut <clears throat> scene, right? Like where he's asking her to kill him, and and help him shoot himself is what he wanted. But there is there is something in this movie that happens twice, and maybe I missed something, but someone can explain to me. But there's this there's a part of this movie where the girl is being saved by the guy, but she just sees Clint Howard's face and she's like tripping out. But later on in the movie, the redneck hillbilly is in the car after he's been bit by ticks. And all he sees is instead of his boss, it's like his boss is like all mutil. It's like he's seeing Carlton does on? the same thing. Carlton yeah. is hallucinating. It's I figure mm. it's hallucinating either from the ticks. Or from the the steroids, too much steroids. Too, yeah, like the the smoke, you know. I don't know. They don't uh, really. Maybe because, they don't explain it really, but they don't. Uh, I was like, I think it's something the with tick, the ticks, right? Because they mention she was bitten by a tick. <laughs> he was bitten by a tick, and so I kind of got it as that. <laughs> um, the ticks, how however they did the effect of all the ticks running around. That looked really good as well. It looked better than a lot of like modern day movies where we see like little critters running around. I thought they did really well with just the, you know, the scurrying around of the ticks. They looked gross. I don't like ticks anyways. And they always kind of make me sick whenever they got big fat bellies full of blood. Uh, yeah, so great. this was effective in kind of creeping me out just a little bit. The uh, we yeah. when I lived in North Carolina for like two years, uh, with my dad, we lived out in the middle of nowhere in this ratty trailer, and so I mean, almost daily, I would get ticks on me like I would have to check myself before I went inside. And so, but and and you know, like what Seth Green says in the movie, you can't just smash them, but I would, I would do that, I would, I would take them over to a stump and just beat them. Out of them just for fun, and I then they just like, <laughs> and then they would off. just, <laughs> yeah. So you got to burn them, but um, this is not the movie you want to watch with someone with Lyme's disease, that's for sure. <laughs> I mean, I guess, is there a arachnophobia for ticks? Stop it, man. Yeah, it's called Lyme's <laughs> disease. I don't know what you're talking about. No, a right, is there a, dis- oh, a is there like a arachnophobia? Yeah, like a fear of ticks. Is it like tick phobia or something? Yeah. Just fear of insects. <laughs> sure. Um, I, I don't really like them. I, I actually kind of dig spiders, but ticks are just really gross because if you don't pull them off just right, they're they're like mouths get left inside in of there. you. Yeah, oh, I don't like it. Yeah, my dog, when I had my little pug, <laughs> he used to get them, and I was always nervous because, like, you can't just pull them off. Mm-hmm. You have to, like, basically take a lighter near it. Not If it's on you, don't burn yourself. I mean, or especially a little baby pug because um, they're adorable. And uh, he's got you just light him on fire. You just get it close <laughs> enough fluid. where the, the tick will, like, release mm-hmm. itself. From whatever it's attached to. When's the first time either of y'all saw this? Because I thought that I had seen this, but what I thought I had seen was actually mosquito. I was gonna say today. This. Mine's today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, saw I saw it. Back. Jeff always sees everything. Like, how old were you? Like 20, 10? <laughs> 20, 10? 10? Uh, I'm not sure. I feel like I would have saw this around the Five? time I saw Herbie? mosquito. <laughs> On sci-fi back in the day. Speedo? Mosquito. Oh, mosquito. Okay, okay. They probably had like a 4th of July tick infestated weekend or something. (laughs) That was back in the day where every holiday had a gimmick. Mm -hmm. I did mosquito. So, Insect, that movie Insect. I don't know what the hell movie I watched at the beach like uh, a few years ago. I think it was Insect or something. 
I don't know what it's called. I actually. think that's a Dark Force release, right? Yeah, like the cover's fuzzy too. Mm. <laughs> I, well, think... I haven't realized we've done like an array of insect movies because we've done ants, we've done mosquito, now we've done ticks, and we did arachnophobia. We need to put well, it. Well, we in didn't combination. do arachnophobia on Night of the Nerdy Laser. We did arachnophobia on Nerdy Laser, but that's fine. Um, Slugs is coming yeah. up next. So that's what me and me and Jeff were talking. So you'll notice that when I took my movie out, um, for those that didn't see it, uh, the the uh, movie inside was still wrapped in the plastic. That's because I watched it on Tubi. Because if we if we pick a Vincent uh, release, almost all of them are on Tubi. It um, seems like that, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, especially the horror stuff. Like I don't I don't think Rad is, but like you know, if it's a horror related title they're almost always on tubi um so i i started watching it when i first bought this movie i was like oh it's on tubi well i'll watch it and then i got like 10 minutes into it and i just turned it off never went back to it so <laughs> but last night i fell asleep i watched like 20 minutes of it last night fell asleep i woke up like four hours later and s the end of slugs was on <laughs> i was like <laughs> so i'm like just waking up and i'm like what the hell? <laughs> what the hell am I watching? <laughs> you want a good tick story? Whenever I was a kid, um, let me preface this, okay, by saying that I had a very open family, and I'll never forget walking by the bathroom door and seeing somebody standing there, but faced away from me, and I was like, "What is? What is that right there? What is that?" <laughs> Just. What is that? <laughs> it's a fucking tick. It's a tick. Oh my! <laughs> I, was, I was like, close the door, dude. <laughs> Take care of your own ticks. I was like, I don't want to. <laughs> so get a tick um, there. That's <laughs> well. It sounds like you both really like this movie, and somebody else that really likes this movie is our pal Jason from the Dungeon. Uh, he is located in Maryville, Tennessee at the roundabout. Uh, just look for the cops. No, I'm just kidding. That, that was just one. <laughs> um, <laughs> they were yeah. in the paper today. They were in they the were on the news. Today. They were on the news. Well, they've been the in the day. news and they were in the paper. So oh, yeah. Fight the fight, man. <laughs> I mean, it's, it. it's, it's, a, it's a lot of might as well. Dealing, You're already but, elbow so. deep upon the borderline. So just dig in. <laughs> So anyway, uh, the dungeon at Southland uh, is awesome. It's got uh, VHS tapes, horror movies, Blu-rays, video games, all sorts of stuff. Our pal Jason is awesome, and uh, you can find him on Instagram, horror underscore dungeon. You can also go to southlandbooksandcafe.com. And, uh, yeah, they've just got everything. I mean... Uh, I don't think he has a copy of Ticks, and actually, this copy might be um, sold out. Me and Jeff can't look because uh, that's closed. where I bought my copy was there. So, but I mean, it was oh at, at Southland, but that was when it first came out. Um, yeah, but I don't know that they have the slips anymore for Ticks. It seems like they probably don't because I mean, I bought this movie like two or three years ago, I think. But anyway, you can it, it, he posts stuff all the time on Instagram. So all you have to do is go to Southland underscore Dungeon. If you see something you like and you're not in the area of Tennessee, you can just contact him, ask him how much it is. He'll ship it to you. You can work that out with him. Uh, they got really fair prices. They got really cool stuff. He's starting to put up Garbage Pail Kids cards and just all sorts of really cool stuff. So if you're in town... You should definitely check him out. And I much guess. like a tick, um, if Jason doesn't like you, he will bite you, and then it's he won't let go. <laughs> He'll also give you Lyme disease. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I was going to say you had to burn him with fire to get him off. Yes, I just, I just, but what what I envision is walking into his store and him perched on somebody's back, just like, hey man, come here, come up yourself. Lash. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna no. finish up here. He's like, <laughs> hey, Rich. <laughs> um no good stuff jason's awesome uh His we're actually bowl. gonna be doing a His christmas <laughs> party what what did you say i said his little belly just, just plump and full 
<laughs> so, <laughs> um, so we're actually going to be doing something really cool at the Bird in the Book, which is right next door to the dungeon. We're going to be doing a very trash talk Christmas party. And it's going to be really fun. We're going to do a live episode of Trash Talk. Uh, Jeff will be on it, and we're going to have some special guests. Uh, it's going to be trivia, and then we're going to do a movie screening. It'll be a lot of fun. It's totally free. Um, go to Night of the Nerdy Laser on Facebook, and uh, we've got a event there. And you can just follow it, get more information there. Uh, we'll talk about it more next time. But um, definitely, uh, that's coming up December 16th. It's a Friday. Starts at 7. Uh, you can eat dinner, drink drink some beer, get some wine, whatever you want, <clears throat> and uh, just hang out with us. So we are going to have a special guest live via satellite, which I've always wanted to say. So. <laughs> yes. Okay, Space Coast, Coast to Coast. We're piping them in. <laughs> yeah, we're piping them in. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be really fun. So, <clears throat> so well, when you said um, Jason's belly full of blood, the scene I immediately thought of was at the veterinary uh, veterinarian's office when she has the syringe <laughs> and she's like, I can't find plasma. So she's, she finally gets it and the syringe, you know, fills up and then it just goes, <laughs> sucks back in. <laughs> so she's like, no. And they do it for like three or four times. And then eventually the tick comes out. It just bursts through the dog. But well, the, the, right off the bat, this is medically inaccurate because that's not how you take plasma. You have to find a vein to get blood. You don't just, <laughs> stab a needle into something's or like their belly you know and she's just, just that good that okay <laughs> so good yeah um my favorite the, part was the tick running around the <laughs> office with a shot sticking out of him <laughs> i mean nika should get all over these figures because i would just love the tick figures like like, like i don't even need humans really <laughs> you don't want to give me the well, you can get Clint as all with all the sores on him um yeah. So, Clint and Seth Green. I needed Clint Howard action figure. Seth Green's action figure would just be depressing. Well, it's he, he, <laughs> he had just one. Made... <laughs> it was uh, Austin Power. Actually, he's had a few, but the main one I can think of is Austin <clears throat> Power. The <laughs> dog did. probably had an Idle Hands one. Mm, possibly, yeah. That yeah, that would actually be really cool with the bottle sticking out of his head. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, the dog death. I want to get an idea of how they did this because whenever he comes upon the dog and the dog is like shaking and gyrating, if you look at the dog's face, you can tell that's a dog. Is it? Yes. Yeah, and it looks I mean, like really a dead good. dog. It looks like they went to a vet clinic and found a dead dog and just put a stick under it and was just shaking this dead dog you know <laughs> <laughs> it looked it, please it, don't it, do that again <laughs> shut up <Chris. laughs> i'll do it every day, you gotta, shake, it every day. Oh, you gotta shake that dog <laughs> yeah you gotta, you gotta shake, shake that red rocket, red rocket red rocket <laughs> <laughs> um yeah i don't i mean who knows i mean have y'all ever heard the story about the godfather where they showed you know dog. the horse yeah it's it's a real horse's head i knew that yeah they but you know where they got it where they just went down to the local dog food factory that makes sense you ever seen that story of cannibal holocaust <laughs> <laughs> whenever someone's like did you know there was a real dead dog in this i'm like you ever seen Cannibal Holocaust? <laughs> <laughs> Have you? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the once the ticks start to like uh, grow and morph into these things, I love that. I do kind of like the plot device of the, all the kids are trapped inside the house, and it's the fire in the woods that's like forcing the ticks. I yes, don't know. I love that part. Yes. And then the ticks are crawling all over the house. Uh, Fresh Prince comes busting in the door and has a great death scene. I mean, well, he dies they really keep good. Him alive. They keep him alive a little <laughs> bit and then he dies. Yeah. He, he acts really good. I mean, it's a really good death scene. Mm -hmm. He's like apologizing and then. He did like full, he goes full. It's not like uh, Pee Wee Herman and uh, Buffy, like, eh, uh, <laughs> no, no, eh, <laughs> uh, 
Oh, uh, that's a good death scene too. I like that. <laughs> One of the best. Um, and then, but then, okay, so they're all trapped. So their idea is to grab the tire swing and swing out of the house to make it to the van. Now, while this is happening, the main henchman is trapped in the main room, and all of a sudden, Carlton's body begins to turn into like kind of it kind of looks like the effect from a nightmare on elm street part yeah, it, four where the woman it's straight up it's straight up like stolen from nightmare on elm street yeah four. that's the only reason like it doesn't do a whole lot for me because as soon i mean but it looks great and they do His a good face, job though it. splitting open was really good but they did that in nightmare four also but i felt like it was a little bit the setup to it and how it wasn't comical and uh, it, it felt, I don't know, it felt like they were trying to do their best homage to the fly, is what I felt like. I mean, it was good. I liked it a lot. Um, the, 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 if the only the tick effect. grabbed the shotgun and was like, Kimmy! <laughs> <You know, like, laughs> Clint Howard did it. You can't do it twice in this movie. Yeah. And also, was that tick just living inside of his body? And then he became a tick? Or was the tick eating him from the inside out? I don't understand how this works. No, I think I think the tick. I think for some reason, I think the tick was just growing inside him. So, like, it was a tick got inside him, and then something caused it to grow. And because by <laughs> the end of it, he just busted out of the body. You know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I thought it looked Bloody great. Explodes, but I, I don't think there's any rhyme or reason to it. it. We just needed a... But we didn't get a good, satisfying, like, one-liner or good death of all these ticks, you know? Like, that's... that's Because even in Arachnophobia, we get the, the kick-ass... Uh, what was it? A nail gun? Yeah, a nail gun shot the spider into the nest oh, yeah. on fire. You know? The spider's on fire yeah. and he shoots. Yeah. Yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 So, I, but, but that, so that's, that's unfortunate that we didn't get that. And, you know, a bigger budget could have done better with the special effects, you know, with the, I mean, could you imagine them trapped in the house with this gigantic tick running up the stairs and we needed and a just, lead tick is what we needed. Like a, yeah, like a like a queen tick. Is that a thing? No, I mean it should have been. You're right. I mean that's what that's what they needed. I mean <laughs> they, which I think the Carlton one tick is, is is what it was, but we just didn't get it the whole movie, you know. So it should have really been probably Clint Howard, like whatever got him, that should have been like the queen. Yeah. I just envisioned something looking like something from like whenever the rock was turned into a scorpion. So I just pictured Clint Howard's dad like bobbing on a head on top of a tent. Yeah. It's his hair. Yeah, that, scorpion, that. that scorpion king special it's still, effects. It's still bad. It's it's still bad. I mean the the <laughs> I, I saw an interview with the uh the special effects people and they, they kind of got screwed. Um but oof. I saw an interview with Brandon Fraser and he was like, listen. He was like, it looks horrible, but for the time, it's hysterical. It looks like a video game. Let's all just laugh at it. You know, he's some, oh, he's got a good sense of humor about it. So you kind of have to. Yeah. Well, th all this shit looked 10 times better than any of that crappy CGI because well, that's when they... it's that computer graphics, right? Especially yeah. the early stuff. And, and uh... Lawnmower Man. Whoa. <laughs> Come to throw in shade at Lawnmower Man. <laughs> Which version? With monkey death or without? <laughs> always with monkey death. <laughs> yeah, always. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. <Yeah. sighs> um, I, I don't know. I mean, it kind of amazes me that this movie didn't really like take off in a way, like for the video stores. I don't know if it was filmed for like. I don't, I doubt it was filmed for like movie theaters. It looked great. Know. It didn't look. It like looked a great, but video what I'm saying thing. is like. <clears throat> this should have spawned a series like you know puppet master and tremors and like it should have had more well they set up for a sequel at the end with the ticks being in like so i would bad. i know i would like to see the ticks invade a junkyard 
<laughs> well, an apartment. Is that Halloween ends? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Halloween yeah. <laughs> so I was just looking it up. It doesn't have, at least on IMDb, the release as far as theaters and stuff goes. So it doesn't yeah. say anything about that. But it does say it had an estimated budget of $2 million. Um, That's a good budget. That's Most but, of that had to go to the special effects. Special effects and casting, for sure. So Yeah. I mean, Seth Green, I mean, he's a kid actor, but, I mean, he probably wasn't cheap. Um, and Peter Scolari. Scolari is the last name. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, he probably, I don't know, he might have been cheap. I, but I think Newhart was going on around this. Uh, no, yeah. Newhart had it. I was I wondering what else. Babies. Yeah, I was wondering what else Carlton had been in aside from Fresh Prince. But when you type up his name, this is the first thing that pops up. For movies. He's, for yeah, movies. For like, movies. Yeah, yeah. I don't think this. he did a lot of movies. He does game shows now, so. <laughs> Makes sense. He looks Which like a game fine. show host. Yeah, yeah I mean, he looks, fine. yeah. yeah. Make good money. I mean, Drew Carey's like, peace, peace, stand up. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Spin that wheel. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to kiss all the ladies. Who was that creepy guy who did Family Feud? Uh, that, and kissed everybody? That's Dawson. That's oh, Richard okay. Dawson. Yeah, Richard Dawson. Richard like, Dawson is my favorite. Like, Let me get underneath the shirt here, and I'll fill here and here. Yeah, and it is a long, long scene. <laughs> yeah, no, I love it. Uh, what's your name, Bob? Nice to meet you, Bob. What's your name, Susan? Hi, Susan. How are you, Susan? <laughs> 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 So if, if you, you ever, ever choose you see him on the match game, you should see Richard Dawson on the match game. It's amazing. He's great on the match game. If you had to choose between watching this or Wakanda Forever, what are you gonna oh, pick? This. Oh, <laughs> Probably this. I do want to see Wakanda though. <laughs> but I usually wait to watch any big thing anymore. Stream. Well, you have to drive six hours to the closest movie theater. <laughs> Yeah, that too. It's like, oh, you want to go to the movies? We have to go to Denver. <laughs> <laughs> and not just Denver. We have to go to the Denver airport. So I have to join a cult and the whole thing. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. We got to look at Nazi traveling... memorabilia. So... <laughs> You've been a traveling man lately uh, to Denver, Jeff. Yeah, yeah. I don't. Oh, uh... yeah. You went to the archive. Tell us about that. The the vinegar syndrome store. Yeah. Oh, and, really? Hell yeah. Yeah, I ended up going. Um, what was it? Two, three weeks ago from this recording, I guess. Pretty awesome. Um, they have like three or four rows, basically big wooden like things, like long ways too. So just like big wooden troughs of movies. So they had you know all the vinegar syndrome, and then they had the vinegar syndrome up on walls too. So like shelves up against walls and then the middle was all like used stuff that people had traded in so they have a ton of variety of stuff like all the boutique labels so that was pretty cool oh, so, it's all, uh, so they they don't just do vinegar syndrome yeah yeah so they got everybody's trade-ins too and then That's you know cool. arrow and uh severin, severin. And just all, yeah. all of them so it's pretty cool uh then they had they had a tv like a tube tv playing i oh well it was oh god it was playing something I don't think it was Voyage of the Rock Aliens, but something just cheesy was playing. So it's pretty great because you made you feel like you were in like a old back, video old, store. Yeah, or an old video store while somebody was working, just watching what they wanted. Then they yeah. had some T-shirts up on the wall. I, I want to say it was maybe like from Paul Bear Press or one of those companies. Uh, so they had some pretty cool stuff. Paul Bear Press. Yeah. <laughs> This, oh, I think this I space is a death shirt might actually have been Paul Bear. <clears throat> really? I don't know. Maybe. And, I don't and then they I had uh, the new releases right there, too. So all the new, each month, you know, Vinegar puts out their new releases. So they had those kind of front. Then they had the glass case uh, with all the, like, rare things in there. I think they had, like, a copy of Rad, um, some of the Vinegar Syndrome Academy stuff. But it's really cool, really clean. Uh, the two people that were working in there were really nice. I didn't catch their names because I was just overwhelmed by movies. So, <laughs> yeah. Did you buy anything? I did. I bought um, four things. I bought Vortex for sure. The Amityville, not the new 4K one, 
but uh, oh. the partner label one. Okay. Um, another partner label that I think was a culture shock releasing. And they do really was, good stuff. Yeah, I really like their stuff. It was the Western one. Um, and there was one more, but obviously I buy too much stuff, so I forget and lose <laughs> track of what I bought. So, but yeah, it was a cool store. I would, anybody in Aurora, uh, which is just like a suburb, I guess, of Denver or a city in Denver. I don't know. Denver's huge. I hate it. But uh, <laughs> anyone up there close That's why I told you to move here, but you won't. Yeah. No. <laughs> but yeah, I would, anybody up there, I'd, I'd recommend checking it out for sure. Support those guys. It's it's a cool place and some cool movies they're able to put out and keep putting out. Uh, and then if you want to talk a little bit more about uh, Vinegar Syndrome, did you guys... We're recording this after Black Friday. Did, did you guys get anything for Black Friday? Any sales this year? I didn't. Oh, I did, didn't I? Yeah, I did. did? Um, what did I get? What did I get, Jeff? Hold on. Let me look it up. I, got, you get, I got Invisible Maniac. Uh, oh, yeah, I got that one. Did you? That one looked so good. It looks really good. It it's from really the good. 90s, and it's basically a crazy scientist. He goes crazy right before he goes invisible, and he just takes women's clothes off. He's, he's, he's Kevin Bacon. The Invisible Man. Oh, I was, I was about to say, it's Hollow Man. Yeah, it's kind of what it is, but it seemed like it had more of a funny like tone to mm -hmm. it. Um, but yeah, the, I got that. I got the two Vinegar Syndrome Academy uh, releases with, what is it, Cynthia Rockwell is in one of them. And oh, is it Sworn, Je Sworn to Justice? Something like that, yeah. And then I got the, Sworn the to Justice, El Santo. I got. And which, what other one? Was it the El Santo? Uh, yeah, that's the one I got. Santo versus Dr. Death. And I got that, uh, was it the Twilight Years of Doris Wishman, the, the third release they did oh. for her? It's an oh, AGFA release, so it's oh, kind of trashy. But yeah, I got those, and then uh, through Severin, I ended up getting uh, Four Flies on Grey Velvet. I'm not happy about the price, but what are you going to do? Yeah, it was like 40 bucks on sale, right? 55. I would I would like to have, yeah, I would I would really like to have it. That's because that's a new release, isn't it? That's a, yeah. 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 Yeah, I mean, it, Severin just released it. Hmm. Um I'm really excited about Santo versus Dr. Death because there's English subtitles because I own like four <laughs> Santos movies and none of them have English <laughs> subtitles. They're just in Spanish. <laughs> That's awesome. So I so sometimes I'll just put them on in the background because <laughs> they're fun as hell to watch. Like just to look at. You don't even need to know what they're saying. It doesn't matter. But yeah, I'm really excited about <laughs> Invisible Maniac and then that Sworn to Justice is just a a 90s action. She's like an attorney and she gets hit <laughs> on the head and she becomes this like <laughs> Punisher Kung Fu lady. <laughs> yeah. She just I, learns Kung Fu because she well, got hit I on think, the head. So I think, so I don't know. Cause <laughs> I read know, the back you know, you of the hear box about people that like it. I read the back of the box and that's what it seemed like. But then I watched the trailer and it seemed like she learned, she knew Kung Fu mm. all along, but then like maybe forgot it. Because, I mean, you hear about people that, like, are in fender benders and they, like, smack the front of the steering wheel and then they come up and they're, like, speaking Spanish or Italian <laughs> for no reason. Yeah. And the wife's like, what are you doing? And then he's like, Arpato. <laughs> but do you think it's because our brain is, like, hearing Spanish, like, a lot? You know, because, I mean, I hear Spanish a lot. So, like, is our brain learning it? So our brain knows it. And then, but we're just too ignorant to tap Here's into what it. I think. I think that there's so many universes that somewhere out there, there's a Spanish version of me. And, and it, if I smack myself <laughs> too hard in the face, then we you switch places. places. <laughs> you freak. You freak. You freak oh, no. Out. He left. <laughs> he we, does, we, we lost he, him completely. He oh, pulls no. a Freaky Friday with uh, himself in the multiverse. <laughs> him and Lindsay Lohan. So, so those of you that cannot see us, uh, we lost Matthew, but he's blinking back. He's blinking back. Hold on. All right, buddy. I smacked it and switched. I was like, <laughs> I was like, did I manifest we, destiny there? We, we thought that you like Freaky Friday and just <laughs> swapped. Yeah, that's that's funny. But no, um, I don't know. It, 
it, but speaking of that right now, I I just thought of my pick for the next one. So I mean, do you guys oh. want to you guys want to wrap this one up? And yeah, yeah, kind of let's wrap it, it up. And we'll, we'll go into our all uh, right, Matt. Your pick. pick what, what, what do you think about ticks? I mean, I give this a solid like. Uh, hmm. I'm gonna give this a solid three little tick bites right on the ass. Just the oh, I thought you were gonna go higher. I thought you were gonna go four. No, no, I'm I'm gonna stick at three. I'm gonna be realistic about this because at the end of the day, there's other insect movies that I like a lot better, like Arachnophobia. Um, so this it doesn't quite hit that level, but at the same time, the special effects are kind of king in this movie. So for me, three. You know what? You've talked me into it. Three and a half. I'll give it three and a half. Yeah, that's my... That's I didn't my do a good job because I would say four. <laughs> yeah, just, I was... Um, I'm going three and a half on it, too. Yeah. 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 It's probably fair. I mean, I, I'll stick with two and a half. I just think it's an average movie. I mean, I, I think it's worth... <laughs> I mean, what? Two and a half out of five is fine? I mean, you know, I didn't it's hate fair. it. I'm going to give it a whole score lower. <laughs> <laughs> I don't um, like Seth Green's face minus two. <clears throat> I, I like Seth. honestly, he wasn't in it enough for me. I, I didn't like the rednecks' teeth. I give it two. <laughs> I didn't like the... Well, if we're grading on rednecks, I give zero rednecks in potato sacks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in there, keep them in those potato sacks. <laughs> All right, so we've got some cool things going on, guys. Um, we are going to be interviewing uh, the one Mr. Mark Scheffler, which I'm very excited about. He played Junior in Last House on the Left from the original Last House on the Left, not the remake. Um, so I'm very excited to have Mark on. I've talked to him a little bit. He, he's a very cool guy. So that interview should uh, be, be uh, going up soon. Uh, check out uh, YouTube. <clears throat> It may not, we may not do an audio feed on that. It may be YouTube only. So be sure to go over and subscribe to Night of the Nerdy Laser on YouTube. We do a lot of stuff over there. Even if you don't plan on watching every bit of it, just subscribe to it. And then that way, when we do these cool interviews, because um, here's a little tip too. We've got uh, Susan Lanier coming up as well. So she's from the original Hills Have Eyes. So we've got some big interviews going up and we're hoping to grow our YouTube channel a little bit more because it's really fun to put these out on video and then just have the YouTube <clears throat> channel. But, you know, we won't lose the audio feed, but YouTube will have things that the audio feed does not. Um, so the next pick is Jeff's. What what do you got, buddy? Yeah. So you said December are our uh, gift to ourselves. Yeah, it's like a Christmas present to ourselves, like a movie we love or a movie we haven't seen or, or whatever you want to take with us. So we were, we started talking about the Cynthia Rockwell film. So I'm going to go and this, you know, it has some horror elements. I'd, I'd say it's more along the lines, elemental wise, like a class of 99. But I'm going to pick yeah. Ninja 3, The Domination from 1984. And oh. I know I covered that on... Uh, Fistful of Action podcast. Oh, yeah. Are you on that one with us? Mm -mm, I've never one? seen it. <clears throat> no, okay. me never. Never. Okay. I've never seen it either. It is it is amazing. There's a tomato juice scene that I hope you guys enjoy as much as I do. <laughs> but I do, before I lock that in for my pick, I want to just make sure it's streaming so you guys can actually watch it. So I'm not like, Jeff, what the F? <laughs> so Ninja 3, The Domination, it is currently streaming, it says, as of this recording on Amazon Prime, Paramount Plus, or FX. Oh, Paramount Plus. Okay. Paramount Plus, okay. Well, I mean, I, I ended up Plus. watching Dead and Breakfast and Ticks. So I now should, should really watch that. That's a fun movie. Uh, it, it, it's got a lot more people in it than I remembered. <laughs> really? So it's got so Oz Perkins. Can... I've totally forgot that he was in it. Wow. So we can. So if you want to do Dead and Breakfast, we can do that. But you have to just let me borrow your copy, and I'll see <laughs> you before that episode. So just let me borrow your copy. 
Okay, yeah, we can do that. <laughs> so we'll do. Um, so we'll, we'll we will cover Dead and Breakfast. So up next is Ninja Three, and then after that, uh, I picked uh, Deathgasm from 2015 because I've never seen it. I've heard really good things about it. Um, and then we're gonna do. Um, we're probably gonna do a Christmas special. Why are you shaking your finger at me? Because then there's my pick, and I have a pick. Well, well, I mean, I, after the special, whatever. Well, we just said it's dead and breakfast. Oh, so we're okay. That's my pick. Then. Well, if you okay. want another one that you I mean, want, if you want, you want another one, go ahead. No, I've already watched it. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> no, we're gonna do. So we're probably going to do Jack Frost as our Christmas episode. Um, I think I think that's probably what we'll do. Can we do I mean, Jack Frost we, one and two? Sure, I've never seen two. I've yeah. never seen two either. I got it on special edition. Did you buy yeah, that DVD? Did, mm -hmm. did you get it before they did all those where they had to repress everything because there were some errors on the discs or something? I got an extra. Th mm, that's a good question. I don't know. We'll find out. And there's two. Yeah. There's two versions. There's the uh, TV cut version, and then there's a rated R version. Did you know that the same thing is on ticks? On Tubi, there are two versions. Yeah, I saw it. that. There was a PG-13 version and an R version. There's one minute missing from yeah, the Yeah, I was going to say, I think the, the Vinegar Syndrome release ended up putting out like another minute or so of footage. Probably making it the R version. The yeah, R version. probably just little second trims off of Gore. So yeah, that. me and Matt actually <laughs> did Jack Frost 1 on uh, Nerdy Laser when we weren't Night of. The Nerdy, we did Nerdy Jack Laser, Frost so. versus... The family Jack friendly Frost. film <laughs> Jack Frost. So, funny. and we talked about how similar these movies actually are. So, <laughs> I will enjoy digging into. I've never seen part two of Jack Frost. So, yeah. So let's let's watch them both. Um, yeah, sounds cool. Nice. All right, guys. Uh, thank you. Follow us on uh, Facebook and Instagram, Night of the Nerdy Laser. Uh, email us, Night of the Nerdy Laser at gmail.com. Follow uh, Jason over the dungeon on Instagram at Southland underscore dungeon. And keep it bloody. Yep, keep it bloody. Because someone has to get nice and plump. <laughs> <laughs> full, and I don't. Reference. It's, just, it's, just a, it's just a tick reference. Like like spoon the the tick <laughs> the tick oh I hated that cartoon when I was a kid oh I did not oh, like man. it I didn't oh, like the it. tick is the best <laughs> I used to love that show yeah, thought he looked like yeah, an idiot really <laughs> well that yes he does <laughs> I know I know I didn't get it <laughs> uh, you should see Patrick Warburton as the tick also oh, that one. That I've seen. That's Good okay. One. The cartoon I didn't dig. Yeah. I never saw the Amazon. Show, I was too busy never. watching the critic for whatever <laughs> the reason. Critic. Like that was I loved that cartoon. I oh, did I was like, why do you watch this? I like that one too. No, no, no the critic was great. <laughs> yeah. <sighs>